When I'm told to direct a scene, I direct it my way. You way? You way went out of fashion ten years ago. You, you, you has been. Has been? If it hadn't been for me, you'd still be a hostess in a crummy den where I found you. On the wrong side of Shanghai. You realize one word from me and you're straight back in the gutter? Just whom do you think you are? Not whom, who? Your grammar like your acting is as crude as ever. I'm Maddie Moran, and I fired a dozen actresses better than you'll ever be. I have you fired. You'll never work again. You're starved to death, you, you, you. <laughs> My town, Hollywood, USA. Main export, Stardust. I'm Red Myers, just an assistant director. Valentino, Douglas Fairbanks, Jean Harlow, the gods and goddesses of our modern mythology. And it's sort of typical of my town. Sometimes we start out looking up to them and wind up walking all over them. Funny thing, though, as often as I've walked this gaudy midway, my feet just won't bring themselves to walk on Matty Moran. He was the greatest, up there with the gods. When you said director, you meant D.W. Griffith or C.B. DeMille. And after that, it was Matty Moran. Where is he now? Well, this is a crazy business. How many of the stars he discovered even know he's in town? Take Miss Sari Sanin, for instance, the hottest foreign importation since Marlena. It was Matty who found Sari in Shanghai, brought her to Hollywood, married her, and made her a star. And then she had him banned from the lot. On the screen, a hundred million men adore her. On the set, oh, brother, that's a different story. Will you love me forever? Forever is for poets and fools. Well, at least until tomorrow. Tomorrow is for dreamers. Then tonight, this single bubble out of the glass, you cannot deny me. <laughs> to realize that I can deny you everything or nothing. I can make you my concert or have you hang in the morning. Oh, don't look so alarmed. <laughs> I decided I'm not going to have you hanged. At least not for the moment. Thank you, my queen, my beloved. Oh, this boy is impossible. He gives me nothing. Sorry, it's his first picture, and he has got talent. Talent? Just because he sings for some silly screaming schoolgirls, you call that talent? Sorry. I'm going home. You can shoot around me if you want to, or call off this lousy picture as much as I care. All right, boys, that's a wrap for the day. Maybe you missed box office champion, but she's mad at murder on our schedule. How many days are we behind now, Red? Seventeen. And all the big battle scenes still to be shot, not to mention the battles with Sari. I've been thinking, Vic, why not get another director and set up a second unit? Got anyone in mind? Maddie Moran is available. Matty Moran, that temperamental old has-been. Oh, you'd be surprised, Vic. He's still got all the old energy and drive. Besides, you'd be doing a great thing, not just for him, but for the whole industry. Let's save the speeches for the Academy Awards. Even if I buy, what about the Empress? Well, they don't have to see each other. He'd be handling stuntman, extras. You could start him out, say, on that, uh, that chase stuff. And if he does all right, well, let him handle the battle scenes. What makes you think the great Moran would settle for second unit, even though he has been between pictures for ten years? If I can talk him into it, does he get the job? Don't pressure me, Red. I'll think it over. Hi, Larry. Where's Mr. Moran? Uh, he's been on no show all afternoon. Gee, I finally got something cooking for him. Thanks. Give him a call. I hope nothing's happened. It's funny, but I can't help feeling nothing will ever happen to him. Even when he's standing right here in front of me, I don't quite believe he's real. 
Kind of more like a legend. Yeah? Well, inside that legend, there's a man who's got to pay his rent, who's got to eat. You have reached a disconnected number. Please be and sure incidentally, who's right got to pay his phone bill. This is a recording. You have reached a disconnected number. Please be sure you are calling... Don't you know. Are you acquainted with an M.F. Moran? Why? What's a pitch officer? Is there anything wrong? A couple of checks with a little rubber in them. What's the tab on those checks? 1750 on one and 25 on another. Well, I wonder, is there any way I could make them good for him? Gentlemen, I came in to see smiling faces. I thought this was a happy ship. Hello, Red. Mr. Moran. Larry, this pub needs cheering up. I say drinks in the house for everybody. <laughs> well, my old friend's the law. I made some pretty good pictures about you. You're Matty Moran. You used me as a technical director in one of your movies, eight or nine years ago. Sergeant Waters. Sergeant Jack Waters. And it was Night Patrol, just about one of the best pictures I ever made. You were a great help, Jack. It's nice of you to say, Mr. Moran. Call me Matty Jack, everybody else does. Except this big bum who insists on calling me Mr. Moran. Ah, <laughs> uh, Matty, uh... Hmm. Something you wanted? Well, I did, but I think it can be taken care of. Well, good. Drop in any time. And if ever you or any one of your family would like to visit the studios, just let me know, Jack. Thanks a million. Goodbye now. Right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Larry O. Sport, another spot of the old amber for my dear friend, Mr. Red Myers. <laughs> Still the best assistant I ever had. <laughs> I owe all that to you, Mr. Moran. <laughs> I've been trying to reach you. Oh, I've been out of Warners all day, Red. J.L. has a big one coming up for me, but you know me. Nothing doing till I approve the script, J.L. Your phone has been disconnected. Uh, temporarily. <laughs> that bad electrical storm the other night. <laughs> mm. These new shirts... <laughs> Wear them twice and they fall apart. Look, Mr. Moran, there's, there's something I've got to talk to you about, and, well, this just isn't a very good place to do it. How about letting me drop you off? And I'd like to come up for a minute, if I may. Why, sure, sure, Red. <laughs> Say, I just remembered. They're painting my apartment today. <laughs> now, look, Mr. Moran, you don't have to keep snowing me. Is your apartment really being painted, or did your landlady just... Well, now... Now, Red, let's not jump to conclusions. Look, Mr. Moran, you can kid your florist into giving you a fresh carnation every morning, but you can't kid a kidder. Now, will you let me take you home, please, and, and, and talk to your landlady? And then I'd like to fill you in on a story idea of mine entitled The Comeback of Matty Moran. Well, I... I might accept the loan. On one condition that I sign over to you two and a half percent of my next independent production. You know, Red, your couple of hundred dollars invested in the future of a neglected genius could turn into a lifetime annuity. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Moran. Not at all. Glad to let you in on it. <laughs> Ta-ta, Larry. Hey, just put that on my tab, will you, Larry? Salute, etc. Etc. <laughs> oh boy, you're still drinking that good 20 year old stuff. <laughs> the best, Red. What else? <laughs> Go on, make yourself to home. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Say, I remember the night you won that. Yeah, we had a great time in that picture, didn't we, Red? Yeah. 
Oh, no, what about this? I don't think I've seen that before. Well, it's my first paycheck from Mammoth Films for $10,000 a week. <laughs> Instead of cashing it, I had it framed. By the time I got around to needing it, Mammoth was out of business. <laughs> Still, it makes a nice bit of decoration. Yeah, it should at those prizes. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me, Red, what's on your mind? Well, Mr. Moran, I think I've got you a job. On your picture, the first empress? That's right. I knew they'd catch that big flanner. So they want me to come back, huh? Hallelujah! I've got it. I've got it. I'm going to call Kerner and congratulate him on the smartest decision he's made as a producer in years. <laughs> I forgot the darn thing's dead. Yeah, I know. Oh, but Red, Red now, is... Look, Mr. Moran, will you listen to me for a second? Vic Flanner is still directing the first Empress. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking to him about using you as a second unit director. Second unit? Well, I know it's humble pie, but at least it's vitamins. Me working second unit under Vic Flanner? Well, I won this award when he was just a bid player and a ham at that. I know it's not what you should be doing, but... Well, if he thinks I'm going to play second fiddle to his Nero, he's crazy. But at least it's a start. A start? I've never stopped. You go back to Vic Flanner and tell him he can... Another electrical storm? Now, look, Mr. M, I saw your landlady and, and I've settled that. And I can take care of your light bill for you, but... But you've got to face facts. Remember these, Red? We used them in the Last Supper. What a scene. Mr. Moran, pride is a virtue up to a point, but, but you've got such a galloping case of it that it's become a disease. Those cops you laughed it up with in Larry's, they weren't looking for a tour through the studio. I know, I know, pal. I've never been in that particular trouble before. Even in the dark, read the handwriting on the wall. The time has come to be a second unit director. All right, Red. Maybe it's worth playing second fiddle to get a second start, huh? Now you're making sense. Oh, but baby, just let me get that one picture under my oh, belt. Now, I'll... slow down, Mr. Moran. Take it easy. This town has changed a lot in the past few years, and you've got a reputation for being stubborn, independent, impulsive. All right, Red, I'll be a good boy. Well, sorry is the star of this picture. That means you've got to be an extra good boy. Stop worrying, Red. As long as you know it's last chance, Phil. Red, as D.W. Griffith is my judge, Exit madcap Matty Moran. Enter methodical Matthew Moran. <laughs> Watch me, boy. I'm going to do you proud. You bet you are. All right, well, I'll go see Vic Flanner and put in the old convincer. Right, Red. <laughs> convincer? You mean that tube at the mill needs to be sold on Matty Moran? Well, forget it. One of these days, you'll be glad to direct my second unit. <laughs> Now, the guards have discovered about your secret rendezvous with the Empress. They're pounding on the door. You make your escape through the window. Look around, then hold it for a beat so I can come in for a close shot of the leading man. Now, suddenly you hear a noise. The line drops. It's Ronnie. Pop back in the window again. Ronnie takes over from there, all right? Okay. Places, everybody. Red, look, I want this shot in the can by at least 8.30, huh? All right, Let's get all right everybody, settle down. This is final rehearsal. All right, number one, take me up. And Red... For heaven's sakes, get somebody on that drawbridge, will you? Right. I need it for the next shot. Right, you all set? All right, Harry. Okay. Okay. Action! Look around, that's it. Hold it for a beat. You can see the line? Pop in, Harry. That's it. All right, Ronnie. Come on down, boy. Easy. All righty, guards! That's right. Okay, Ronnie, take your fall. Cut! You all right, Ronnie? That a boy. You okay? <laughs> that was a great fall. All right, get ready for the take. Okay, take me down. Nice work, fellas. Make it look tough, boy. Take me up. Easy. How's Harry it going, boy? Red? Oh, hello, Mr. Kerner. Oh. Fine, fine. Well, how many setups? 
Oh, this will make ten, and big ones too, Mr. Kerner. They're tough ones. Start your action up high. Keep taking me up. Step up the pace, boys. That's it. Now down he goes. <laughs> That's terrific. Well, I wasn't sure that he still had it. Oh, well, Mr. Moran always was a fast worker when he was in the mood. And, of course, the crew's crazy about him, which doesn't right. hurt. Okay. Red. Red. All right, Mr. Moran. Excuse me, Mr. Kerner. All right, boys, settle down. This is a take. Those shots were really great, Matty, especially the fall from the window. Real Ufa stuff. <laughs> Ufa, that's real Moran, Mr. Kerner. And the sword fights were terrific. Fast, but not phony. Best time I've had in the projection room in months. Thanks, Mr. Kerner. Maybe we should have had you on this picture a lot sooner. <laughs> Thanks. We'll see you later. You bet. You hear that? Gosh, if you keep pitching like this, Mr. Moran, you can write your own ticket. The biggest stars, the biggest pictures on the lot. Now, don't you worry, Red. When I'm back up on top again, I won't forget my friends. <laughs> oh, incidentally, uh, what'd you say your name was again? Oh, Myers. Red Myers, sir. <laughs> Matty Moran, just the man I want to see. Vic Flannan. Well, how's my co-director? Lance King, the newest teenage delight, Matty Moran. Aye. Charmed, Dad. Uh... Well, the word is all around the lot that you're making a real contribution to my picture. I'm delighted. Well, I want to thank you for giving me the chance, Vic. If you can still deliver, I'd be the first to spur you on. After all, it's the picture and not the individual that counts. Thank you, Vic. If uh, things were reversed, why, uh, I want you to know I'd do the same thing for you. Well, as a matter of fact, Matty, tomorrow I've got a rather rough day working with Lance. I've told Sari she could have the day off, but if you would take over her next little sequence for me, it's the one where she puts on the servant's clothes to escape the palace. Uh, yeah, 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 I read it. It's a nice little scene. You think you can handle it? Why did you bet I got it in the can before lunch break? Good boy, Matty. That'll save us a day at least. I'm counting on you. Practically done. Aren't you being unduly generous, Dad? Throwing him to his old nemesis, Sari? It's like tossing a juicy Christian to a hungry lion. But even I've heard the word on him. I mean, under control, Dad. The new Matty Moran. Well, I'm counting on the old Sari Sanin to bring out the old Matty Moran. Wild. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Now hear this. Today's a big day. Your captain expects every man aboard to give his last drop of life's blood for the grand old flag of Transglobe Pictures. <laughs> Carry on, men. Well, it's the big one, boss. Good luck. Thank you, Red. And uh, just relax like old times, huh? Right. Miss Sanin here? In her dressing room. Tell her I want to see her. Um, delay that. Delay that. I'll go see her. The mountain will go to Her Majesty. And a boy. <laughs> start out low. Matty, darling. Sorry. Oh, my darling. Darling, how do you do it? You actually look more beautiful than when I found you in Shanghai. And you, Mother, you look wonderful. You know, darling, I'm so excited about this day. But my astrologer told me that something old is going to come back in my life in a new way. I never dreamt it's going to be you. And not just for this one day shooting, sorry, darling. Tonight, after we finish work, I have a story to tell you. Only you could play it. <laughs> and only you can direct it? Well, we'll come to that when we come to that. You know, Matty, sometimes I really wonder how we could part. <laughs> you adored me so. You used to call me your little white Persian kitten. Hmm. My white Persian kitten. No wonder you're the world's image of desire. But beauty calls. <laughs> Sorry, darling. We're going to have a rehearsal. Okay, sir. I'm awaiting your orders. <laughs> and, Matty, darling, please don't believe all those terrible things you say about me that I'm temperamental. <laughs> I'm going to be put in your hands. Thank you, darling. <laughs> all right, boys, settle down for rehearsal. Uh, Jim, oh, I need sweetheart. Deborah. Hurry and get undressed so I can put on your clothes, then hide in that closet until I escape. Well, hurry. What's the matter, you silly goose? Cut print! <laughs> Sorry, you're a doll. 
red from now on her name is one take sorry <laughs> sweetheart the next setup is at the entrance to the secret stairway you'll be wearing the kitchen maid's dress and we'll be ready for you in 15 minutes <laughs> thank you maestro i'll hurry thank you dear <laughs> maestro i really got her eating out of your hand i was sorry in your corner mr moran why you'll be right back on top again i can see it red i, I can feel it i can almost taste it but first things first let's get this set up Red, I've got an idea for this secret stairway. Now. Well, sir, how do you like it? Magnificent. Like an empress. <laughs> Only in this scene, you're not playing the empress. You're impersonating her kitchen maid, remember? Of course I remember. After all, I'm on this picture for two months, and you're on it only for two weeks. I sing out to understand a little bit better than you do. Well, not if you play the scene in that costume, you don't. The whole point is that you pass for a kitchen maid. But, Matt, darling, even as a kitchen maid, I have to look glamorous. This is what my public expects me to be. Darling, that's what makes a hash of every story. You glamour dolls are afraid to look real. I want you to wear exactly the same dress the kitchen maid was wearing. Sweetheart, I am the star of this picture, and this is the gown I am going to wear. Well, sweetheart, I'm the director of this picture, and that's not the gown you're going to wear. You're going to change it right now, and that's an order. An order? And are you really the director of this picture? <laughs> Isn't that funny? So all this time I was under the impression that Vic Flanner was a director. When I'm told to direct a scene, I direct it my way. You way? You way went out of fashion ten years ago. You, you, you has been. Has been? If it hadn't been for me, you'd still be a hostess in a crummy den where I found you. On the wrong side of Shanghai. Shanghai, you barbarian. Do you realize one word from me and you're straight back in the gutter? Just whom do you think you are? Not whom, who. Your grammar like your acting is as crude as ever. I'm Maddie Moran, and I fired a dozen actresses better than you'll ever be. <laughs> you fire me. I have you fired. You'll never work again. You're starved to death, you, you, you! Stop worrying, Red. We've been in worse trouble than this before, haven't we? Well, I think I'll go over to Larry's place and sit it out. I can't stand the suspense. <laughs> All right, boys, that's a wrap for the day. Hi, Red. <laughs> well, Mr. Moran, hey, from the look of that grin on your face, we might have come out on top, huh? LP says I can go back to second unit. Shalom. All I have to do is to apologize to Sari. Well, we're back in business then, huh? Me? Apologize? I told him if there was any apologizing to be done, it's she who ought to be apologizing to me. Either I'm a director or I'm an office boy. I guess I should have known. There's no room in a director's lunchbox for humble pie, is there? Now, come on, Red. Stop looking so worried. <laughs> I've got a lot of things on the fire. Matter of fact, I've got to call Goldwyn. Don't be too surprised if I step into a big assignment. <laughs> and you'll be right there with me, baby. Maddie Moran looks after his own. <laughs> oh, incidentally, uh, got a dime handy? Oh, sure. <laughs> Thank you, partner. <laughs> you know, I just learned something, Larry. The Matty Morans of this world don't come back. Comebacks are for ordinary people. I don't know, maybe there never was a Matty Moran. Maybe he's just the eternal fresh carnation, the eternal grin, the eternal hope. He's a legend, Red. Yeah, a legend that walks like a man. Well, here's to both of them. The legend and the man. Is he in? Just tell him, Matty Moran.
Thank you.